We are Joy and Jason, a husband and wife duo who enjoy riding our bikes. We've been riding for almost three years now and get a kick out of challenging ourselves each year. This summer, we decided to ride to five towns in five different parts of Connecticut. It will be our longest ride in a span of six days. The first day of our trip starts right at our house in Danbury. We will ride from Danbury to a small town called Falls Village. Our first rest stop will be at a convenience store in Gaylordsville to stock up on water. Then we'll head over to Macedonia State Park, down Sharon Mountain, and into the town of West Cornwall, the last town we ride through before hitting our destination. Aw, bye babies. See ya in a week, guys. Be good for Grandma. Rudy, come here. Come here, buddy. Rudy. Oh, gosh. Why are you in a crate? It's too dark. Buddy. Come here. Oh, he's mad. His mommy and daddy are going on an adventure. I think they're jealous. Oh, see ya, guys. Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome back to today's video. Uh, today is a pretty exciting day because we are actually starting our tour of Connecticut. This is day one of the tour of Connecticut and behind me you can see my fully loaded bike. So let's take a look to see what I have there. So my setup is I have the tail fin rack here. Um, I got a couple of Velcro straps and attached to it is um, a bag uh, where my sneakers are and I also have Bluetooth speakers because why not it's going to be a long couple of days on the bike and so nice music to go along with it would help. Um, last time you saw me riding the bike I had a three bottle setup. I used the Wolf Tooth B-Rad system the mounting system and now what i'm allowed i'm able to do is push this uh, bottle cage down further so that there is room in between the top and my front wheel so it prevents it from rubbing up against each other like unlike the other time that i um i was riding this uh here the bottle cage is a lot lower um, so it is some getting used to because I actually have to kind of go further down to reach for it because I needed to make room for the frame bag. This is the Apidura frame bag. Um, otherwise, if it were in the same spot as it was before, uh, in its original spot, it actually would hit up the top, would actually um, push into this bag, which I don't want to do. I also have the, this is the B-Rad uh, mounting system. This is the 3-1, whereas these two are actually the 2 mounting system. This is the third one, so I can push it up further, closer to my top tube here. And there is some room in between the top tube and the top of the bottle cap. Uh, and that's primarily because I wanted to fit this Apidura frame bag. Uh, I have the drone uh, remote control in there along with other um, items like repair kits, extra tubes. Um, up here I have the top tube frame bag. I've been using this for a while now. Uh, the thing with this is that it's really easy for me to open and grab some items. Uh, I usually have food in here but this time around I don't have food and there's a reason for that. Um, the only concern that I have with this is that when I'm getting off the saddle, my knee does hit this flap and it tends to open it up. Uh, so that's the only gripe I, I have about this top tube bag. 
Next is this, uh, this is by Moose Jaw. I got this from Amazon. And I forget what this is actually called. It's like a water bottle holder, but I don't have water bottles in here. Or I don't have a water bottle in here because I have plenty of water bottles already. Instead, <clears throat> I have food. So lots of my strawberry crumble in here. And it's easy for me to just pull on this and it closes up on itself. And I have to tuck away this little um, piece so that I don't, my knee doesn't hit up against it. And it does. When I get out of the saddle, my knee does hit this area or this part of the uh, the bag. I also have uh, water bottles on the uh, fork. I have on both sides, I have two water bottles there. So I have a total of five, which is actually quite an overkill. Uh, and I say it's quite an overkill because this ride today, the first day is uh, five, no, 50 some odd miles with 4,000 feet of climbing. And so um, it's plenty of bottles, three water bottles, and we have some stops is plenty. But I know that there will be other days where we will not have um, stops because there's one day where we're going to be riding through a state forest and there's really no other place to stop for water. So that's why I have the two extra bottles just to make sure that we are, um, that I'm uh, properly hydrated and that I have enough water for the uh, rest of the ride. And yeah, um, oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to mention is that I did swap out my chain ring. I used to have a 42 tooth chain ring and I've swapped it out to a 38. Jason and I actually did a trial run a couple of days ago with this most of the setup um, already and found that the 38 actually it does a really good job uh, in giving us enough gears on the climbs. I didn't feel like I needed more lower gears when I was doing these steep climbs, um, so which is a good thing, uh, a good sign that uh, the gearing is, is good. The only problem is that, or the only downside is that I do lose the gearing um, on the low end of the, or should I say the, the, my fast gears I don't have because it's a 38-10 combination. So I do spin out on the downhills, which is not an issue for me, especially when we're just doing a bike packing trip. It's not a race or anything. Um, eventually I will swap it back out to a 42. Um, when we do the Macedonia gravel grinder, but for now the 38 is doing a really good job in um, helping us up on the climbs. So I am just waiting on Jason to get set up. He actually has a very similar setup to mine. Um, my whole setup is about 43 pounds, which um, if you convert that to kilograms, it's about 19 and a half kilos, pretty heavy setup. Uh, that is with the three bottles full. I have the two fork, uh, the two water bottles and the fork. Um, I just have food in there, so it's not full with water. Um, but yeah, I am so excited to do this ride today and I'm curious to see how everything pans out. All right, so this is Jason's setup um, in comparison to mine. So very, very similar um, with the Lauf Anywhere bike. Um, his is actually a little heavier, mainly because a lot, his shoes, you can see the, the this bag here, the sneakers are heavier. Um, and he actually is bringing a little bit more items on him. Uh, the frame bag, the Rock Bros frame bag, the frame bag he's been uh, using for quite some time now and he likes it so he has that packed with food. He does not have his handlebar bag here. Um, unlike, uh, unlike me, I opted for the handlebar bag just for additional storage um, and he opted out for that. So he has his setup similar to mine with the five bottles and uh, the 38 chain ring and the tail fin rack. Oh, the only difference with the tail fin rack is that um, I actually have an extender on mine. His uh, is just the regular one. So he has this extra, um, I guess, uh, what is it called? The frame uh, down at the bottom. 
uh, and his bag just kind of slips into underneath here. Whereas for mine, I don't have that because the extender, I have my extra rear light here. So this is the extender and the reason for that is because my seat is lower than his and so I would not have enough room um, if there was no extender. So this extender is really helpful in pushing the seat back a little bit just so that I have room to actually, uh, you know, fully load this. Two days prior to the start of our trip, I suffered from a sore throat while Jason was having dizzy spells. We contemplated what plan B was going to be, but I had no plan B. Everything was booked, the bikes were set up, and the only thing to do was ride them. Got out of the uh, hustle and bustle of Danbury and New Fairfield, and now we're heading into Sherman. And uh, so far, the forecast was saying cloudy, and we got some sunshine. So, uh, yeah, started the day off with, well, a couple of days ago, we went for a test ride on our setup here and unfortunately in the middle of the ride or towards the end of the ride I started to feel a scratch in my throat and that evening it was starting to turn into a uh, sore throat. Woke up the next day with full-blown sore throat and didn't have fever. I didn't have any uh, aches and pains or anything, or body aches, so... Took a COVID test yesterday, came back negative, both Jason and I. He's suffering from a dizzy spell, this dizziness that he's had for a while now. And, uh, yeah, woke up this morning, I felt better, I don't have, or I feel better, I don't have sore throat anymore, uh, I now have swapped the sore throat out to a runny nose, so I have a little bit of a runny nose, but nothing, nothing like a little snot rocket that clears out the nasal passages. It's actually a nice day to, to ride because it's not too hot and it looks like the forecast for the week, it's going to be cloudy with a slight chance of rain and uh, can't complain about that because the temperature will be around the 70s. Three quarters of day one's route was familiar to us. We descended down my favorite descent into American Pie Company, but unfortunately had to forego the stop since it was still too soon to do so. Back. 
in Sherman, we ran into our first snag of the day on Churchill Road. So we have to do a little detour since there's some road work behind me. Uh, yeah, we still could, we're still gonna go back. We're still gonna go to the convenience store to refuel. But now I know we came down a, came down a hill. We have to climb back up it. Oh well. It wasn't too difficult to reroute, but it did add additional miles to our ride. This becomes a theme each day as we navigate through uncharted roads and trails. So, um, we are about 27, well, 28 miles into the ride and we have about 25 miles left to go stopped here at the deli just to grab a couple of items i am feeling kind of off so maybe a little pick me upper like iced coffee will do and another bottle of water uh and then sh and then about 10 miles or so we're gonna hit up some gravel uh same kind of gravel that we have done uh with in our macedonia gravel grinder recon route um so we're gonna take some of that gravel and then connect it to Cornwall where we will be approaching our destination at Falls Village uh, in, in Connecticut um, in the Falls Village Inn. That's what we're staying over uh, tonight and yeah so uh, so far so good. We had a little minor hiccup with a detour there. They were working on the bridge um, on Churchill Road and so we couldn't cross the bridge. There were signs warning us but um, I thought maybe they by chance they weren't working on it today because that's what happened last time but forgot today was a weekday so yeah there was some road work and we had to do a detour but no big deal. Uh, we got here and uh, we're gonna refuel. I want to show you guys my strawberry comb that I made this is good for a couple of weeks actually. I made this two weeks ago and it's still pretty good. And yeah, I'm gonna have this one. Crap. After stopping at a convenience store in Gaylordsville, we felt light drops of rain on our forearms. It seemed as though it was going to rain steadily, but luckily for us, it was on and off throughout the ride. Just in case, we put on our rain jackets. Where? So, um, it looks like the rain is coming and going. Uh, we see drizzles here and there. It's actually drizzling right now. You can't tell, but um, decided to go with the arm warmers instead. Uh, it was actually a pretty uh, cool descent, and the rain jacket actually helped to um, help to keep my core temperature warm, so I don't get too cold. Uh, yeah, so we're on Scattercook Road now, and we're gonna be doing a approximately a six mile uh, climb uh, from Macedonia State Park all the way up to Westwoods Road. And uh, after that, we get a good descent down Route 4. I think it's Route 4 or Sharon Mountain Road. And then flat, I believe, to the uh, inn. So 
I just relieved myself in the woods, so I gotta do a tick check later. So, what do you think so far? Uh, well, I've been kind of struggling with my goofy spells. Um, I just took another dose of medicine. Uh, I'm hoping that that lasts for the rest of the ride because I'm only supposed to take it three times a day. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what, what's going on with this thing. It's been bothering me the last last couple of days. I've been having uh, dizzy spells and I don't think I'm sick because this is something that I've been dealing with for almost a year now. These, these, these spells that, that come and go. Um, and unfortunately, they're coming on at a bad time. But, uh, you know, again, I took my medicine. Hopefully that it helps me get through the ride because I am really determined to finish out this, uh, really determined to finish out this bike packing trip. Um, so I spent a ton of time planning this thing. And, uh, Yeah, I'm uh, not about to quit now. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that my dizziness goes away because like I, it's been coming and going for uh, many months now and you know, there's a chance that it'll be gone tomorrow. Uh, so I'm just gonna try to do the best I can to get through this, uh, this bike tour and just hope that Hope it gets better as we go along. After leaving the quiet gravel roads of the park, we were rewarded with a paved descent down Sharon Mountain into the town of Cornwall and West Cornwall. From West Cornwall, we hopped on to another gravel road that runs along the Housatonic River, conveniently named River Road. This road will eventually take us to Falls Village.
All right, so uh, almost there. So we've arrived at this inn. It looks kind of haunted. Uh, Check-in is at 4.30 and trying to find where we would check in. She said to check in at the side door because the front is not open. Okay, found the side door. She's talking about. Um, not sure if this is a historic inn. There's a lot of those in Connecticut, but figured it's a good stopping point. The cafe we'll walk to tomorrow morning, have a nice breakfast there, and uh, get on with our ride. Thankfully, I don't feel totally, sometimes I feel completely, not completely wiped out on our rides, but I feel pretty tired. I am tired, it's just because I still have this, uh, whatever it is that I'm fighting and my nose is running. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing better now. I'm feeling, uh, I had a, a couple of down moments during the ride where I was feeling really dizzy and, um, you know, I actually questioned whether or not I'd be able to continue on. Um, but fortunately, taking my medicine helped the, with the dizziness a little bit. Uh, and I actually found that, um, I don't know if my, my sunglasses might have been contributing to it because making my vision too dark or something. Because when I took my sunglasses off, I also started feeling less dizzy. Um, so I'm feeling, feeling okay now. You know, not spectacular, but, um, you know, we made it here. And, uh, yeah, the, the legs are fine. You know, today it was just, uh, it was just dealing with the dizziness. Um, hopefully... Like I said, it comes and goes, so hopefully um, tomorrow will be a better day when it comes to that. But uh, it was a it was a cool route. Um, you know, had some. It, it was nice at the last part of the route, this uh, river road that took us here, and that was a nice, quiet gravel road to ride on. So yeah, it was fun. Check out Jason's guns. Oh come on! I don't have. Well, we're here inside our room, uh, pretty cozy location. Um, I'm looking forward to having dinner. I'm starving and I'm also looking forward to a nice hot, sh nice shower. All right, uh, see you guys tomorrow.